Healthy fats like olive oil, canola oil, avocado oil, seed oils are also really good for your health. You crazy assholes. Where do you people come from with the f***ing seed oils nonsense? Do a f***ing PubMed search and see if you can find anything about seed oils being bad. Seed oils are a major problem, and they're everywhere. And influencers like Dr. Lynn Norton and Dr. Mike Israetel may be contributing to millions of people's poor health. Did you know cardiovascular disease is the number one killer globally, and seed oils, which are high in linoleic acid, have been proven in the longest and most well-controlled studies ever conducted to increase your risk of death. Both the Minnesota coronary experiment, which was four years, and the Sydney coronary experiment, which was six years, showed a higher cardiovascular mortality in people consuming polyunsaturated fats over saturated fats. And this is because linoleic acid actually becomes part of cardiolipin, which is the phospholipid on the inner mitochondrial membrane of our cells. And when the portion of linoleic acid gets too high here, it can cause mitochondrial dysfunction and faster aging. And here's the scary part. Linoleic acid actually has a half-life of two years, so it could really build up in the body. Hi, I'm Brendan Henry, founder of the Peptide Science Institute and Scientific Augmentation. And if you want to optimize your mitochondria, step one starts with your diet. But for additional mitochondrial support, check out my Peptide Mastery course. I am the first person in the world to review every single study ever published on the Covenson's peptides. I translated thousands of these studies into English with the help of my Russian guide named Helen. And I created the most comprehensive course, covering all 41 of them, plus 30 other peptides, in scientifically accurate depth. It's all there, with cheat sheets, quick reference guides, 42 video modules, and 54 synergistic peptide protocols. The link is in the description. Now, Ali's made this incredible video, breaking down why you should never trust influencers like Dr. Mike Israetel. If your health, your performance, and your longevity actually matter to you, then watching this could be one of the most important decisions that you make. Canola oil and soybean oil and sunflower oil and so on. And these are plant-based oils which need to be highly processed, ranging from bleaching, de-waxing, filtering, and even possibly genetic modification of the plants used to make these oils in order to make them safe for human consumption. And by the time they're bottled up, we're left with an oil containing trace amounts of trans fats which actually are increased in concentration when the oil is heated up to make something like french fries for example, as well as a higher percentage of omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids particularly one called linoleic acid. This is found in concentrations in these oils higher than any other fat source that has been consumed by humans throughout history. And when it comes to the discussion of whether or not these oils are unhealthy and potentially doing long-term cumulative damage in humans leading to diseases and whatnot, the evidence is not clear-cut either way and the discussion becomes very, very nuanced. And yet, you get people like Mike Israetel, who calls himself Dr. Mike because he has a PhD in exercise of all things, ridiculing and insulting anybody who wants to pursue the nuances of this topic and actually have an educated discussion. So according to Dr. Idiot, no matter how hard you look, you're not going to find any studies online about seed oils potentially being harmful for humans. Well, I'm about to show you several of those studies that apparently don't exist and we'll start with this one on non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is a disease that's uh, approximated to be present in 25% of adults in the United States. And in this study, it was found that the metabolites of linoleic acid, 13-HODE, 9-HODE, and 5-HETE were actually associated with a more advanced form of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in people who had it. And in addition, lowering the concentrations of these metabolites in the blood through dietary interventions actually caused a regression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in individuals who already had it. And the liver is an organ that's heavily involved in metabolism. It filters the blood. It creates enzymes and proteins for the body to use. So having a fatty liver with fatty deposits in it is gonna definitely hinder all those processes and that's why the disease known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is not a good thing to have. And in this study, we see that there is actually a correlation between the metabolites of linoleic acid and advancement of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And one of the goofy ass points people like him make is that seed oils can only be bad for you if you overconsume them. Hi, Brendan here. 
And if you're interested in our molecular bioenhancement coaching programs, where we create real health and performance transformations, then just check the link in the description. In this eight-week feeding study, only 10 grams of soybean oil, a seed oil, was actually enough to raise both oxidized LDL, which I will explain, and LPPLA2, which I will explain. So LDL is what you've heard of referred to as bad cholesterol, but that's an oversimplification. And um, when the LDL is actually oxidized or prone to oxidation, it is more prone to be engulfed by cells in your body that are a type of white blood cells known as macrophages. And this is a pinnacle and crucial stage in the development of atherosclerosis, which you may have heard referred to as cardiovascular disease. And as for LPPLA2, when that marker is increased, it is associated with arterial inflammation, yet another process that's considered crucial for the development of cardiovascular disease. And keep in mind, this was done with just 10 grams of soybean oil. That's not a lot of oil at all. That's not a lot. And we can see two pathogenetic stages being promoted by just the consumption of 10 grams of such oils. And while most of you have already heard about LDL and oxidized LDL or bad cholesterol being referred to as causative agents in the development of atherosclerosis or cardiovascular disease, lipoprotein little a, which is a form of LDL, it's a species of LDL that's a way more aggressive risk factor and causative agent of atherosclerosis. And in this study that was performed in a hospital setting, you actually see that substitution of uh, saturated fat from animal fats with uh, polyunsaturated fat from plant fat was actually able to increase the concentrations of lipoprotein little a in the serum of patients who are participating in this feeding study. I personally do not subscribe to the idea that you don't need to have low LDL in order to not get cardiovascular disease. I think it's a flawed idea by the keto and carnivore community. And I'm not going to get into it in this video. Maybe a potential video in the future will discuss it. But lipoprotein little a is known to be a more aggressive risk factor for developing heart disease in humans. And raising lipoprotein little a through a food is never a good thing. And there are more examples of cereals having harmful effects on your lipid profile, but in the spirit of not boring you to death, I'll finish off this topic with this study on 414 men where linoleic acid consumption was actually shown to make their LDL more prone to oxidation and therefore more prone to be engulfed by macrophages and therefore leading to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. But in order to keep this video juicy, we'll discuss how seed oils could potentially hinder your abilities to achieve a better body composition and keep you fat. So first of all, we all have organelles in our cells and the vast majority of our cells actually that are called mitochondria. And the mitochondria of your cells is where the vast majority of your ATP, which is your basic cellular unit of energy, is synthesized from macronutrients. That's things like glucose and fat. Okay. Now, in the mitochondria, there's a process that's called mitochondrial respiration, where the vast majority of ATP that's synthesized in the mitochondria is synthesized within that process itself. And anything that's harmful to your mitochondria has great potential to be harmful to your metabolism and your ability to not only synthesize energy, but to break down the food that you eat properly. The mechanism by which linoleic acid from seed oils can actually do this is that there is a molecule that's a part of your mitochondrial membrane called cardiolipin. And cardiolipin is a molecule, like I said, that's a constituent of your mitochondrial membrane, and it can have fatty acids being part of its structure. Now, when linoleic acid becomes a part of cardiolipin, it is more prone to oxidation and therefore mitochondrial membrane damage. In this in vitro study on placental cell lines known as SWAN71 cells, linoleic acid was actually shown to reduce mitochondrial respiration, alter the inflammatory response of those cells, and alter gene expression of mitochondrial fatty acid transport proteins in a way that could potentially hinder transport of fatty acids into the mitochondria and therefore their breakdown. Being that the placenta is the organ that supplies the fetus during pregnancy with oxygen and nutrients, these findings are pretty worrying, 
in my opinion, and even the authors of this paper suggested that due to that, the consumption of linoleic acid should be done with caution during pregnancy especially. But it doesn't mean that linoleic acid consumption is only going to be potentially harmful for your mitochondria if you're a pregnant woman because we see that this effect seems to be indiscriminate across the mitochondria of the body. So for example, in this mouse study, linoleic acid consumption was actually shown to induce apoptosis and dysfunction of liver mitochondria, apoptosis being a programmed death of these mitochondria. In addition, it activated a protein known as NLRP3, which uh, you can think of simply as your body's uh, danger detection signal. It is activated in situations like bacterial infection, for example. And another way by which uh, cereal consumption and linoleic acid can actually hinder your ability to get fit is they can increase your appetite. Basically, uh, if you've ever smoked weed or you know anybody who smokes weed or read about weed, you'll know of an effect known as the munchies where the person who is smoking the weed or whatever becomes a bottomless pit for junk food and they can just eat and eat and eat junk food ferociously with almost no end. Well, this is mediated through the cannabinoid receptor and specific cannabinoids found in weed. They can actually activate that, that receptor and boost appetite significantly. And in this study, the mice were actually fed a low-fat diet, but linoleic acid by itself was able to increase the concentration of endocannabinoids in their blood and eventually lead to more appetite and weight gain. And while the studies I've shown you about mitochondrial membrane damage and mitochondrial dysfunction and mitochondrial death, and increasing the concentrations of endocannabinoids and causing weight gain. Sure, they were not studied in humans directly, but that's because it's very expensive to do such studies in humans, and it's not very profitable. So the return on investment is not there. And to just take mechanistic data and say it means absolutely nothing is, in my opinion, very ignorant. And it shows that somebody doesn't even want to have a real nuanced discussion, open-minded nuanced discussion about a topic that's complicated and this person is not really passionate about science to begin with. Now, the main benefit of cereals, which are high in polyunsaturated fatty acids is that they can lower your LDL, also known as bad cholesterol. So the hypothesis became that they can be natural alternatives to statins and they can lower the risk of cardiovascular disease and so on, right? Well, this hypothesis is not exactly proven to the degree that Dr. Idiot thinks it is, okay? So, for example, in the Minnesota coronary experiment of 1968 to 1973, I believe, it was shown that there is an actual 22% increase in the risk of death for every 30 milligram per deciliter of cholesterol that was lowered by consuming seed oils and it should raise suspicion in you as well that studies like this will not be included in some very big meta-analyses that were done on why seed oils are quote-unquote beneficial for humans right and you will not hear me one time say that anybody who disagrees with me is just an idiot like i said in the start of the video this discussion is very very nuanced and the evidence is not clear-cut and there's actually evidence to support both claims whether the claim that they're unhealthy or the claim that they are healthy OK, so I'm not here to ridicule anybody who disagrees with me or wants to have the discussion that's nuanced. No, but to have a channel with 2.3 million subscribers calling yourself a doctor in order to garner attention when all you've studied is exercise and then calling everybody like me a crazy asshole and then go taking it a step further and saying there's no evidence whatsoever to support the hypothesis that seed oils could be bad for us. This is just anti-scientific. Anybody who's passionate about science will be excited for nuanced discussions like this. They'll be excited to have an open-minded discussion and discuss all possibilities, all the evidence, all the data, and so on. And they will not just ridicule anyone else who disagrees with them or call them crazy assholes or say that there's no evidence whatsoever to support our hypothesis. That's just not the spirit of science and it's not the spirit of reaching truth. 
to reach truth, you have to dissect, you have to dig, you have to roll up your sleeves. Now, in my experience, I cut out cereals when I was 17 years old in 2016 because I was advised to do so by Vinny Tortorich, who I highly recommend you check out. He's a very knowledgeable guy. And after three months of not having any cereals, even though I was in ketosis while eating cereals, in three months, the effect was drastic on my energy drastic and anecdotally there's not one person whom i've worked with and advised to cut out seed oils that did not have a positive effect the effects were to varying degrees but literally all of them have had positive effects okay you can say that this is all placebo and it doesn't matter and whatever i don't believe that to be the case this is not a coincidence i've worked with quite a few people in my life and i've advised a lot of people in my life as well and for nobody to not see a positive effect i don't think that's a coincidence i've heard positive anecdotal reports ranging from better energy levels like i had better mood better sleep so many beautiful things have happened with people who cut out cereals in my experience and you can read more anecdotes of that online and to say that this is such a mass placebo effect that's happening everywhere in the world i think is a little ridiculous whether or not you agree with me whether or not i've persuaded you whether or not you stop consuming cereals after this video i don't care okay i'm not here to convert anybody i'm not here to belittle anybody i'm not here to insult anybody except dr idiot because this is, like I said, a very nuanced discussion. The evidence is conflicting, and I respect anybody from either side of this topic who wants to have an open-minded, nuanced discussion about it, who actually digs deep into the data, and who actually comes up with their own opinion, okay? If you say that, no, in my opinion, cereals are healthy because this and this and that, that's okay, that's fine. You know, I respect you. But to come here and say, uh, the other side who says cereals are unhealthy, they're just making hypotheses out of thin air and there's no evidence to back up their claims that's just ridiculous okay it's ridiculous and it's wrong and it's pretty much in my opinion dangerous because you're killing off the possibility of having nuanced open-minded discussions and pretending like medical science is like mathematics where you know like algebra where one plus one equals two and whatever no it's not like that it is not like that okay and anybody who properly reads literature will actually know that it is not like that there's a lot of conflicting evidence in a lot of topics if you enjoyed this video you can bless me with a like and a comment and subscribe to stay tuned for more informative videos you can find my website in the description to check out my services if you want to work with me you can comment